everyone, and welcome to episode 18 of the Get Hitched Live Wedding Chat Show. Today we're going to have a special um, episode. We have three special guests. Um, basically, we wanted to discuss with suppliers and get a voice from different perspectives. Our guests are Paolo Borch Bonacci from Elia Caterers, who also take care of Giardina Lambrosa and Veranda, and they're going to be representing the voice from a point of a wedding venue and caterer. We have Katia Gatt from KG Events. She's going to be representing um, the voice from the point of a wedding planner. And then we have Simeon of Galdes, who is from Simeon of Galdes Weddings. And he is going to be representing a voice um, from the point of a wedding photographer and videographer. As always, I'd like to say thank you very much for everyone that has been watching our shows. I do look forward um, because I really think this is going to be an exciting program. And please, if you have any questions, thoughts, concerns, even about your up coming wedding, be it if it's in the next few months or next year, feel free to put them in the comments and we'll be able to have our suppliers today answer your questions. I'm just going to invite everyone in, which is going to take just a minute. Okay. Good afternoon. Hello, hello. <laughs> Hi, Hi everyone, how are you? Good, good. Hi, Katya. Okay, hi, Semenyov. And hi, Paolo. Mela, just for everyone's reference, I am going to put up your names under your beautiful faces. <laughs> if I find yours, Katya. <laughs> how has your week? How has your week been so far, guys? Hectic. Me. <laughs> Paolo's very busy. quiet. Yes. I'm quiet. I'm, I'm, I'm quiet because of the result of the week. <laughs> well. Yes, well, it's it's been um, a bit of chaos. We've had a lot of updates yesterday. Um, so before we actually go into everything that we wanted to discuss with the topics today, perhaps mm -hmm. each of you would like to introduce yourselves for our viewers and just give a small introduction of what you do and how you came about. Um, to being the supplier that you are today, because you are all very in the industry, well known, um, with very good feedback from previous weddings that you all have worked on. So, Katia, do you want to start? <laughs> okay. So, I'm Katia, uh, and I'm a wedding planner and coordinator, the founder of KG Events. We started off eight years ago. Uh, well, this is it's. Wedding planning is not just a job, it's a passion. It's very important to be passionate about my job. Our clients are always and forever our first priority. And that's what makes us who we are. I don't... Yep. Very good. Thank you very much for that, Katya Semenyov. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Um, uh, I'm Semenyov Galdes, and I'm a wedding photographer. Um, I've been in this industry for the last um, eight to nine years and um, basically these are very challenging times but we're trying our best to cope and make sure um, we keep going and making the best out of it. Very true, very true. Thank you very much Semenyov. Um, and final, last but not least, Paolo. I know a lot of people know who you are but <laughs> so, um, I am Paolo Borges Bonacci, um, uh, one of the directors of Elia Caterers. Elia Caterers is a company that's been established since 1953. Elia was my grandfather. Now the company is in the third generation um, uh, phase, means that uh, it's the third generation that are running the business. Um, it's a very exciting time um, uh, for us, uh, especially with all the investment that we did. Um, with regards uh, catering, we do outside catering and also in-house, in-house in our two venues, uh, that is Veranda and Jardine and Ambrosa, respectively. Um, uh, um, uh, our aim is to um, make uh, our couples, our clients' uh, dream come true, because what we will be discussing this uh, in the, this coming uh, hour or, or so, whatever, it's uh, a dream day. It's something that couples have been working yes. on and dreaming on for years. Um, and the Akaters, we try our best 
um, to exceed in, in our service and make these couples uh, their dream their dream day. That's that's another definitely idea. definitely. Thank you very much. Yes, um, from the point of Get Hitched, we tried to choose suppliers that we knew um, had years experience in the industry. So thank you very much to all of you for accepting to attend and take part in this show today. Um, what we wanted to give out is to give a voice so that from a point of a couple and a point of a supplier, everyone can have the time to talk, get an understanding. And, you know, regulations are changing on a daily basis. So weddings are already a very big thing in Malta. And to have from one week um, having this and you can have a stand up wedding to the next week, you can have a sit down to the next week, you can have 350 people, then you can have 100. Um, we just wanted to help out so that as your, you as viewers could have a bit of clarification um, from suppliers that are actually dealing with this on a daily basis with all the different weddings. Something good for our viewers to know is in Malta, you have an average of 2,500 weddings that happen per year. So you are not alone. If you are planning your wedding and you've had to postpone it once, twice, three times, you are there with everybody else. And we just want to help you out to make sure that your big day can actually happen. Right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to shoot yeah. off into the first topic um, on our agenda today, guys. Um, basically, we wanted to go into straight away. I'm just going to put it up for everyone. How will new restrictions announced yesterday, the 17th of August, affect weddings happening from now until further notice? So, we know uh, there's, there's a lot of restrictions that have been put in place. We have um, from sanitization points, masks. For example, yesterday they announced um, that you have to have the one person per four square meters. Weddings can now only happen seated, right? Um, mm -hmm. it's, from the it's quite a lot of change. It's from the 28th tie-up. So that's already a very good point for everyone to know. Um, but do you see these different restrictions are going to be affecting all the different weddings, especially with the Maltese? Yeah, so. well, for sure. Uh, um, they, they will be affected for sure. Um, obviously, I think these changes will formalize Maltese weddings. Um, however, probably they will be even more costly. However, deep down, I still think there's a lot of potential. I still think weddings can be great. Um, uh, the limitations, despite being there, can still, uh, they won't affect the day and the emotions and the love that the day brings, you know, and the fun that the couple will have. Mm -hmm. that's up. That's up. Yes. I think, um, if I may, it is very important to start from this fact that uh, even the government and the health authorities are recognizing and are um, uh, making a difference on events and weddings. Yes. And this is because they see the importance of weddings. For some people, a wedding, um, they might see weddings as just an event, a party, let's dance. For other people, an event is a start of a journey. And we Maltese, we have this in our culture and we have this in our values. And for some people, these values are very important. There are couples who won't start a new family until they get married. So before we talk about the wedding per se, the wedding as the event. We have to see what the wedding stands. Means. That, that is what why, stands for. Uh, and that is why um, uh, some couples have not yet thrown the towel, uh, you know, and that is that is why some couples, even though, like you said, um, have have postponed twice or three times, are still not giving up. And, and that is very important because this is the start of their journey. So, and this, um, we're very lucky to see that even the government here um, is recognizing this fact. And by giving us this opportunity that we could still uh, render a service, um, that is, I think, it's already a big plus, a big positive, um, uh, positive um, uh, in, in, in I agree, I agree. Because, because like, that, like that, we don't need to stop weddings in reality. We exactly. just need to restrict them and close an eye to the traditional that we know. Exactly. We need, we need to have an open mind about this. That's it. Yes. Very good, very true. 
Um, weddings yes. can still happen, and to be honest, I think uh, all of us who worked in the industry, we've, we've seen weddings like this before. Foreign weddings were very close to this. I mean, maybe yes. some restrictions with, with, uh, with the numbers, um, but these types of weddings have happened um, f- for quite a long time. So this is not that is something really new. In fact, for example, mm-hmm. speaking for myself, I have these types of wedding already in the brochure. Seated weddings can happen, um, they're, they're not the traditional Maltese weddings, yes, that's true, but for those who still want to get married, and I hope that we don't uh, let COVID win here, I mean, because we have an enemy that we're fighting against, um, we're still very lucky to still um, uh, do, we, we can still plan these weddings, and I think it's, it's still a beautiful day, I mean, the setup, everything would be important, the details are still there, the cake, Everything and exactly. uh, both cut, yeah, exactly. and, uh, and and similar can can also uh, agree. I think on what I'm saying. I mean, this yes. is something I personally love seated weddings, but that's me. I can't impone it on anyone else. But exactly. I love seated weddings. Yes, I and as you guys mentioned, mm-hmm. exactly. And as you guys mentioned, foreigners majority do have seated weddings, and also the cousins, which the gold, are yes, just gold right next. Of- Yes, in fact, the, my Gozo clients, the only issue now is number of guests because obviously we're, lim- we're limited with the, we're w- with the square meters. That's it. Have you had any perhaps any consideration from um, couples, Katya, where, for example, they could have 200 or let's say 300 guests that they are limited to have, but also have perhaps a virtual setup? So perhaps um, the the great gra- the grandparents who would be able to see the mass and and at mm. least uh, what virtually had, be present for the day. What I had so far is one wedding in June, uh, where because of restrictions we did a live uh, a live uh, video. The, the 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 videographer did all the setup, so all of the guests that couldn't be at the wedding because of restrictions could see the live mass going on just for the mass because that in reality the ceremony is the most important part of the whole wedding and yes Um, it was really really nice because everyone was involved in the most important part i think katia touched a really important point and katia touched a really important point that in these times um, it's challenging for us suppliers as well but we need to try and be not only accommodating, but try to come up with the goods to be able to help the clients, help the couples in this case, and um, have a can-do attitude. So the fact that there was a live stream during the ceremony opens up a lot of possibility. People joined in, and obviously the situation is different than if we just said, no, I'm sorry, that's not possible. Um, We need to be accommodating. It should never be a question. It's not possible. In reality, it should never. Exactly. It should never be that, that that sentence should never be said. But at this time, it's it's out of bounds. If you say mm-hmm. that, I mean, you're not into your what you in your job. I'm sorry. We mm-hmm. have to bend our backs and bend certain rules so to make sure that the couple have everything possible on their exactly. table. Exactly. Katya, yeah, bending my back is not possible. <laughs> <laughs> but um, uh, is I'm sure from, uh... <laughs> joking apart, um, to add with what Katya is saying, and what this, for example, the the web conference thing, we had foreign weddings that that um, that had uh, live uh, streaming by us mm-hmm. streaming. Um, and they had two receptions uh, at one go, going from one country to the other. Um, it, uh, it happened, I think, I've seen that, if I'm not mistaken, twice. Um, uh, and something else. This is like, uh, I like the idea. Uh, I'm, I'm the type of person that if there is something negative, we try to get something positive out of it. Like me. So, I'm sure that in, in two years' time, the couples who are getting married and deciding to getting married right now, even right, even through all the stress and through all this this all, all this drama going on, and I really don't blame them. I don't blame the couples, the wedding suppliers, anyone, the families. 
Well, this I think in the, in the near future or in the future in two years time we will look retrospect. Mm -hmm. Yes, and we'll say, uh, look, we survived it, and and uh, this is part of our memory now. And that is why, also, mm -hmm. I mean, I like some ideas that I've seen online, I've seen in the weddings. Um, for example, uh, couples with uh, taking photos with the masks on his and her, for example, um, or I've seen photos. <laughs> of Baby, you know, who I want to mention, for example, and um, that when he was going uh, in the church, the the, uh, the temperature was taken even uh, um, uh, for the couple, and there was a photo of the couple taking the temperature. I mean, it might look stupid, but this is part of the story, you know. So it let's, is. Use, it is. So let's it is. use all these all, all these elements to make make the 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 the, the story new. Because I yes. when we look back, we will say. Listen, 2020 was the COVID year, but listen, we still managed and and we turned this 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 the, thing the, around. Uh, mm -hmm. And, and, and it's all a weddings that is going to go on. Yes. Yes. And all weddings happening in 2020, in reality, in, in all the all around the world, are gonna be written down in history because these are the couples who took the chance and went against all odds. Okay. Yes. Love prevails. Yes. yes. <laughs> very good, very good. And if like I know it's been very stressful for all of you, Katya, I'm sure you know you're accommodating, moving things around, getting in touch with different suppliers. I mean, I can only imagine from your end, and I imagine even from your end, Paolo, where you have to transition any weddings um, into a seated meal, into I don't know a three course meal. I don't know if you want to explain a bit. Uh, the difference, you know, like stand up, they just have normal finger food, the the stations, and then sit down. For example, me, I, from all the Maltese weddings I've been, I've been to one sit down wedding. Okay, so first of all, uh, the, the most important thing is that you discuss with, with your clients and you see uh, what they have in mind. There are some couples who are still opting to have finger food on plated um, service. Um, obviously, okay. you'll need to change the, the menu in that way, but that's an option. Um, so the options right now are you can still have finger food uh, and a plated setup. Obviously, it's not going to be the plated, the, the, but for people who still want finger food, that can happen. Obviously, it's the couple who, who needs to see what they want and what they don't. Uh, most of the couples are going into plated, the, 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 um, the plated type. So first course, uh, second course, uh, dessert, or five course, some cases. Um, uh, you have, um, and we will discuss menus. Yes, uh, right now I'm meeting couples that um, they have their weddings uh, in, in close proximity in, 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 the, in the coming Very good. Yes. Um, and, and we're making ch uh, changes, obviously. Uh, fast changes, we need to be there. I am supposed to be on a one-week uh, holiday right now, but... I decided to come back to work because uh, of all this that's going on, which is quite understandable. No rest for the weekend. No. Right now, we have to be there for our clients. We have to listen um, and help them with these changes. Seated weddings can happen. They're beautiful. I mean, um, people have different ideas. I think it's ten, it can still be fun. And I, for example, one of my best yeah. friends had organized a seated wedding. And you can imagine my clicker. Um, and we all sang sitting down and we waving our glasses, we had beer, everyone. Um, it was still fun. It's, I mean, uh, it's, 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 it's uh, on, on the other hand, it's what you make out um, from, from the wedding. It's no restrictions, to be honest, can, can stop you from having fun. No. I mean, sometimes, I mean, it, it, when, I you're in a, when you're in a theater watching a play, you're sitting down, you're sitting down, and you're laughing. And you're having fun, you're enjoying it. Exactly. So, um, uh, yes, it is. Uh, 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 if it's different or not, obviously, I'm not, I'm not here to tell everyone that it's not different. It is different. It but is. that doesn't mean that being different has to be boring. No, that's not the case. Exactly. It, it all works exactly. out from the seating plan, who you're seating together. It all makes sense. Some couples like to play around with, like, let's let's uh, put one table with people they don't know each other. I don't really agree with that. It's nice to have people who know each other. So 
they have you know they can socialize i have uh, i have been in situations i have been seated on tables where i do not know each other and in the beginning i was a bit shy but after 50, after the first two drinks you love it then because you're you're, you're talking with a new person you're if it was me i speak to ants if i had to because i speak to anyone but not everyone is like me <laughs> not everyone is like me so you know i try to make everyone <laughs> yes. comfortable yes yes so at least because i it's a new i do norm, find because it's the go, new go, norm, go on. we try to make it more easy you know Yes. 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 I I was going to mention as well, like something that I see um, in weddings that always someone is always trying to create that something special, having a really cool cocktail bar, having the most you know um, modern um, uh, stand food stand that is in hype at the moment and so. But realistically, any guest that is going to be going now to these weddings, it's going to create such a memory because it's going to be so different. People are going to be creating new traditions. Um, new ways to have the way, and you're literally given um, mm -hmm. the papers in your hand to do whatever you want. Exactly. It is a once in a lifetime <clears throat> opportunity to take it and do something amazing with it. And the restrictions, um, if guys, I may, guys. I don't want to win. Sorry, I'm better. Yeah. I was going to say that the restrictions are not restricting the copies from everything. For example, you can still have a photo booth. I mean, in the sense of a yes, backdrop, still, you know. Yes. And so there's still different ways how to enjoy it, how to create atmosphere, and how to create the memories. And remember, even though a dance floor isn't allowed at, the, at, the, at, the, at this time, uh, you still split the seated wedding in two even though again i say that the dance floor is closed for the time being but if we if we set up bistro tables high tables far from each other and that small cluster can stay together like we were you know like like like, like we were told if i'm near a bistro table i can still move to the music i'm not i'm mm -hmm. not risking mm -hmm. anything and i'm not breaking any laws so we can still split exactly. the seated wedding in two parts. The first three hours is dinner, okay, or lunch, and then we move to the cake cutting, etc. And remember that the couple can still do the first dance because some the people have this idea that they can't dance. Of course, they can dance. I mean, they're the same cluster. It's <laughs> one of the most important parts in the reception. Yeah. <laughs> you have the speech, yes. and then you have the first dance, and then everyone's crying, and then oh. <laughs> Very good. Crying or laughing um, at the groom, yeah. okay? <laughs> <laughs> Depends on who's dancing. Comment, um, exactly that's actually for... my colleague. So we have a comment here from Francesca Fava, um, where basically I'm going to have to read it for you guys. The price for a seated menu is double the price. Was so looking forward to having a planned, uh, to having as planned. How can I arrange everything seated in less than three weeks from 400 people to 80? It can be a possible to have a seated wedding, but as mentioned, double price for the wedding. Mm. So this lady has been given a, a price that has been doubled. Double. Double. Oh, I don't know her supplier, of course, but it, it doesn't need okay. to be double the price. It doesn't need to be yeah. double the price. Um, Paulo can confirm. Paulo can confirm. If, if I may, it's yeah. a fair comment. Because I think what Francesca is saying is that she is reducing uh, the, 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 the number of guests. Number of 480. Guests. So she's also calculating the income that she was going to get through uh, the presence versus now against the cost. The cost obviously will have to go higher in some cases. It depends on the menu that you had before. Um, uh, you can have menus that are standing up menus that are more expensive than seated menus. So it's all, it depends on the menus. It depends on the situation. I think uh, in cases uh, you have to see what, what I cannot just answer um, Francesca before knowing um, the, the situation, to be honest. But it doesn't have to be double the price. Exactly. Um, that um, then it depends. Perhaps, perhaps we could we could recommend for Francesca to actually speak to you directly after the show, Paolo. Um, uh, the best to see if, if she speaks. She it's has to, first, yeah, she has to speak with to her, her own case. Case. 
to her cater. Yes, I yes. Mean, and if she um, has a planner, I usually the planner is the one who guides the client, I mean, to the best solution. I mean, both financially and both, you know, within all restrictions. Um, I have I have clients that are changing from standing to seated, and I don't see that there should any, be any problem. I mean, yes, and like I said before, and I'll keep stressing on this, there have to be changes. Um, one has to also consider, um, uh, if you're going to postpone, that there are costs in postponing a wedding as well. I mean, there's cost in everything. Everything comes with a cost. Now, not everyone charges for those costs. Um, if I had to cost all the work that we as suppliers, and here I, 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 I'll, I'll put on the cap because I'm also a chairperson uh, in an SME subcommittee uh, of wedding suppliers. We as wedding suppliers, and I think both Katya and uh, um, Simanyov, uh, Simi. Simi, whatever, <laughs> sorry, it's very hard for me to pronounce. Simi. Um, um, uh, are going to agree to a certain extent. All the work that we have been doing, it's not even covered sometimes by the cost, uh, by the extra cost, because take it from me that I have couples that recently I've already changed their menus twice and I'm going to change their menu once again. So that is extra work for us, it's extra logistics. So yes, but we are doing this, all of this to help the clients, to help our customers because yes. this is a situation and we, we, we have to help this, the, 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 the customers as, as, as it makes sense uh, after all. And I'm seeing Ben Vincenti is also trying to be cheeky here. How you done, Ben? I bet it's the Ben. So we do have a comment here from Ben Vincenti. Thank you very much for watching the show, Ben. Um, for Paolo, I dare you to bend your back backwards now on live. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a wedding uh, subject. It's not a sport. It's a meta treat, Ben. Then the hour now in <laughs> yeah, Alberta, if I may, if I may, Albert, I, I yes. agree 100% with what Paolo is saying in the sense that some there are times where I wouldn't want to be in the couple's shoes because of the situation. I mean, I had a couple's that had their wedding three days after the first measurements were introduced back in March when the churches ultimately were closed down. So I had a particular couple that purchased the flowers and it was too late to get a refund, for example. All these situations happen all the time. So the least we can do as vendors is, as much as we can, be available. And I have some, some clients, some couples, that even text me in the evening, you know, what about these dates? Are you available? Can you check for video? You know, and so obviously if you leave it there, you know, and it goes unanswered, it's not a service that you want to give. Um, so we're doing what we can. We're stretching as far as we can, even Paulo. Um, uh, <laughs> however, ultimately, they have to also understand that um, we are trying our best and we're going the extra mile as well. Yes. Yes, that's a very good point to put out. It was something that I did want um, you guys to voice out. That because from my end, I'm all, every day I'm talking to different suppliers in weddings, events, corporate, everything. And the most factor that I've noticed all throughout 2020 was the amount of work that you guys have gone through to try and accommodate and make sure that anybody that's trying to plan any type of event, they get exactly what they're looking for, even if they are restricted to wearing a mask. Or having to, you know, uh, take a temperature of the person on the way in. Or, for example, a point that we haven't mentioned so far, for example, um, having a wedding planner there, I'm sure, is very good um, for contact tracing. So you could have a list of every person that is coming in. You're making sure it's and you have everything have in order. It's legal to have it. And obviously, from my end, I need it. I, I ask my client to that I need the, the list ASAP because it's very important that even when MTA comes to check, everything is in order and they can go through all, you know, all the details. Exactly. A wedding, even a just wedding, in case. Uh, uh, Paolo before said something really important. It's very good that now finally weddings were taken out of the bracket from events because Tracing a wedding is so easy. We all know all the stuff yes. who was working because there's a schedule. We all know the guests. So it's so easy. With an event, it was impossible. 
I'm not saying that it's good that events have to stop, but that's the that's um, the truth. It's that's the that's reality. The situation we are in at the moment. In in to co to to continue on on uh, Katia's argument, all closed events by invite, okay. being a wedding or not. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. Being, as long as it's by invite, exactly. as that, this can be managed because we we have traceability. We have um, everything. I mean, it's a closed environment. We know the crowd is controlled, and now with tables, it's even better. I mean, with direct tables or even as we were working a few weeks ago with bistro tables um the, the crowd can be managed and um, we've already seen that happen and i think now with the new restrictions um this can be uh, even people because we also need to speak so, the, so there's an, another um undercurrent issue here and it's the invites some of the invites are not comfortable maybe to go out in crowds as wedding suppliers, what yes. we are doing here, we're also um, giving giving uh, a, a peace of mind to those who will be attending a wedding, being the family or friends or whatever, that they are sit seated in a safe environment. Exactly. So there is nothing different in, different yes. in between going to a restaurant or to a wedding now. Um, and I think supporting the couples is uh, so, so important. Yes. Obviously, Guys, I am I going need, to go sorry, through the comments because we have a few more questions here. Yes, um, I can. Just, yes, I can. Just, just to add a little point also here, I think even the guests have to make uh, their part here as well. I mean, if they cooperate, I mean, yes. uh, when, when coming in, blah, blah, blah. We will Throughout run. the whole wedding, in reality, it's very, very we, important. We will run smoothly. I mean, it's, yes. there is no people might think that's a big thing. I mean, believe me, we've we've been working these types of weddings for years. Exactly. In weddings, there's always been a level of respect. You know that you're you're allowing another person to guide you. You know, you're if you're told to do this in a wedding, it, there's a certain amount of respect that you want to adhere to it, even more so now as a guest that you'd know perhaps um, that the bride and groom um, uh, perhaps have um, grandparents or parents there that might be vulnerable. So of course, the, I I do believe, and I have heard from different suppliers that so far every wedding that has happened this year. Everyone has been very um, respectable. Everything has gone as expected, as planned. There were no hiccups whatsoever. And everyone loved the wedding day. Yes. So we are running in. We, we've hit already over 30 minutes. We're still on our second question, guys. I am quite <laughs> <laughs> so we had um, John B. Vincenti that asked, is there a COVID dance, uh, some kind of trend dance that they're doing for COVID now? Um, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> <On TikTok. Okay. laughs> we have um, Abigail Merci. I hear, thank you, Abigail, for your um, comment. Uh, she's asking, are bistro tables still allowed? As in yesterday's measures, they mentioned that the weddings need to be seated, which in fact, yes, yes they did mention yesterday, yes. it has to be a restaurant environment. Yes, but but remember, I mean, if we're doing a couple of bistro tables, just if someone wants to stretch his legs while the couple are dancing, we're not doing anything wrong, as long as we don't have everybody around all the bistro like things. we used before. And then, then there's the wedding planner who needs to control the situation. If I may, I think it's even better, Katya, because you are creating a, an, um, a secluded area. So that, uh, that's why I mentioned the bistro exactly, tables before. Exactly. Exactly. Very good. Okay. I hope that answers your question, Abigail. Thank you very much. Um, we have another comment from Ben, who told you Meta Treat, Paolo, um, and he put a laughing face for you. So perhaps you can then take this one <laughs> between you guys. Um, but then Ben did ask, um, he mentioned, I'm curious, after the announcement yesterday, have you as suppliers received any requests from couples to switch their upcoming wedding to a seated wedding? Which I think, yes, Paolo, you have. Yes, um, quite a lot. And I'm, I'm pleased. Because at least people are understanding that their wedding can still go on. Very good. Very good. 
It's now going on to the so thank you very much, Ben, for that. I am going to go into the next point on the on the agenda we had with regards to the indoor and outdoor weddings. Now I know we've already covered it a little, but I know people are always um, happy with clarifications because we have X amount of quantity of guests for weddings and based if it's indoor, based if it's outdoor, then there's a one person per square meter. And what's your take on all of this? How are you managing to with the seated now it's a bit different. <laughs> Sorry, this. Now, with the seated now it's a bit different because in reality, even though now the restrictions on numbers are a bit more tight, but with seated it's much more you it's manageable. It's more it's more now it's more manageable. Before yes, yes. up till the twenty seventh of August, it's a little bit more you know, it's not that easy because Okay. okay. There are the square meters, but to have everybody staying the right distance exactly where you need them to be, it's not easy. It's not easy. So you need right. to have rulers where people would just hold to understand this. My, you need to stay two meters away from me. <laughs> uh, to, to be honest, um, if if there is something, I was very surprised um, from the day one of this COVID till today is that. Even though sometimes we say people are not disciplined, and I tend to agree to a certain level. But then, even if you take, for example, queues, I've never seen the Maltese people queuing, um, literally keeping the... I, I've, I've been to Malta Post, everyone was queuing, there are one hour queue, and, but everyone kept the distance. I think, at some extent, people are cooper, co are cooper cooperating. Well. cooperating. And... and and this happened also in weddings. If you feel it, we had weddings and no one went to the bar. There was bar service and the, uh, the waiter service. And people really cooperated with this. I mean, and to be honest, I was quite uh, skeptical if this was going to happen. And it happened. And this gave us, and I think even the authority, because if this didn't happen, I think they would have stopped the weddings. I think this also gave, because in every wedding that happened so far, and the past weeks, we had um, uh, the uh, people from MTA coming to check and also the whatever. They came to check um, if we are adhering to, to, to the restrictions. And I'm sure that even this will keep on going, which is good. Um, so what I'm saying is that, yes, being in outdoor, indoors and whatever, the advantage now, Alberta, is that we have designated areas. So now there's no excuse of running around. It's man it's even more manageable. The designated yes, areas are there. there. Yes, and every venue has to prepare uh, their, their charts and their uh, setups for the clients to... to and if I can add, Paul, uh, and it's very important that the caterer has the right amount of staff so people don't complain because of waiting for the drinks, etc., etc. It's summer, it gets more hot, so obviously, you know, they... Yes. Uh, so it's very... There's something in my, I actually want to ask case, about. In my, in my case, I mean, because Paolo is here, I've already worked with Paolo during COVID and I had no problems whatsoever because the staff were all... I mean, they were all the time there. So at no point in time did the, did the guests feel that they need to wait a long time to get served because there's no bar service. So it's very important that the caterer has the right staff, right amount of staff during any kind of event and wedding. And that is where Tayyip. services like Atia Sahali I were reciprocate. <laughs> Um, are important and and i'm not um, this is not a joke i mean when people tell me that they have a wedding organizer and the organizer knows what what they are doing for us caterers and service providers it really facilitates our life and um, this is why it is important sure. to trust and I'm, I'm saying this across all the board here right now right now right now i think all the people that are dealing with service providers right now they will know why they had to pay maybe a little extra, not in all cases, because it doesn't mean it, but you have to choose the right persons. Right now, you people will start understanding how important it is to trust yes. people who are professionals. Yes, and even and also, you know, something, this has been something. 
Yes, to, to see the value, but something that I've always mentioned to so any friends or anyone um, that asks me about a wedding is how important it is to have a person there to help you put everything together. On the day, you want to focus on getting dressed and being calm and preparing for your vows and, you know, taking that photo with your father and your mother and so on. Um, and not have to worry about if the caterer, if I did tell them this, is the photographer going to make it on time? Because having a planner there or an organizer is going to make it, put it all together. And even more so now, it is extremely helpful to have someone like Katya. And if I can say something, um, guys, I would add communication is key. So um, yes. It's, yes. it's the whole point. Whenever even us photographers and videographers, we don't need a plan, but at least we'd know what's coming up. You know, if there's a surprise, if there's something not on the agenda, chat that we were not told before, it's always good to be prepared because that can mean the extra photo or the difference. Exactly. Yes. Yes. Issa, guys, I am going to put in a question. I believe it's for you, Semenyov. Um, mm -hmm. What about photography um, from Elken? I'm hope, I hope I'm pronouncing this correctly. I apologize if I'm not. But Elken Kaleya, who asked, what about photography? Can you still take a group photo? Giving guests should remain seated. Yes. Well, let's put it this way. Um, you can still take a group photo. It's not a group of 20 people. Normally groups are for at most six people and it's a few seconds. So it won't be, there's no risk in that. Um, uh, however, on tables, it's a bit challenging. Um, however, we'll still do it, but it won't be the same thing. Obviously, it's when it's a group photo, it's a formal photo. When it's on a table, it's more informal, at random, you know, when people are enjoying themselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can still do them, Tom. Yes, but yes, yeah, I'm sure you can. One for the, we can, no, you can still do them standing up, what I mean. Because first mm -hmm. of all, most of them are family. So same mm -hmm. cluster, okay? Yes. And second of all, remember, we're fa they are facing you. So they are not facing each other. If anything, so, I'll keep my social distance. Like, well, <laughs> you have, you have your, your camera to do, to, do the, to do the magic, so you As don't a, need to be close. Yes, but yes, I they can still it's, be. It shouldn't be a problem, honestly. I don't see it a problem. But remember, always keep with the same cluster. It's very, very Agreed. important. Agreed, agreed. Yes, yes. And Elkan has also asked, um, also for the cutting of the cake, can guests gather around the couple? No. The same argument? No, no. no. Hmm. No, we're having uh, even, you know, markings just so people will stay away from the people. I was going okay. to say same argument, meaning cluster, um, couple and parents, or yes, maybe, that's it, that's you know, it. those okay, but not the large crowds, you know. Not, even, or... not even bridesmaids, nothing. No. What, what we need to understand is this, that all these measures are being done to reduce um, the, the transmission factor. Exactly. So, yes. Um, uh, whatever, wherever there's going to be a cluster, this is not uh, ideal. So, um, cutting of the cake, photos, I don't know, anything else, like queuing for buffets, that is not done, buffets are closed. Uh, so, wherever there was a risk, even bars, uh, to have clusters, this cannot happen. I mean, um, but you can still uh, be around the cake table because People are um, cake facing, and the, I think, to be honest, um, uh, you can also see it this way. Now the couples have the chance to celebrate uh, and have more attention because when everyone is gathered around uh, the cake, okay, that's a different, nice atmosphere because your friends are there. Sometimes you can't see the couple. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Me, for example, being I'm not a very tall person, I have to go, you know, like. Ah, to get the cake and I have to go, you know, to, to, to. Now, now I can see the cup and finally. So. <laughs> well, I'm going to go into the next question we have from the Green Reiner, which I, you know, I think we can all, we've already answered this question um, in a previous point, um, but thank you very much, Doreen, for the question. With a sitting setup, do you change, do you suggest changing of menu for finger, from finger foods? I which, would, Paula, I you mentioned you yes. can have different options. I would say yes. But obviously, it's, it's everyone's... It's, it's really up to the client. Exactly. Uh, changes need to happen. Um, why? Even if they keep the finger food style, um, you have to um, 
in, in most menus, uh, you don't have an item for every person because you add variety and you think of uh, people who, for example, why add uh, 300 pieces of sushi for a wedding of 300 persons when not everyone is eating sushi. Now, this is more challenging because if I'm presenting a plate, all plates have to be the same. So even if we're discussing finger food, we are changing um, the, 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 the ratios there. And for those who want to go for plated, because this is a seated and uh, plated uh, are mostly um, uh, in, 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 in trend. You know, when, when you are sitting now, mostly the menu is seated, plated dinner. Um, yes, you can change from finger food to, to plate, but uh, we are offering um, both options because it's ultimately right. what the, the, the client exactly. Uh, exactly. The client exactly. Do they have I also have options? a question. Yes. Um, I also wanted to ask for you guys, because I did see um, a question on Facebook yesterday about this, um, where basically they asked, if since you're going to have um, a table set up where you have six or eight, I, eight, I can't remember, eight, six or eight, 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 it's up to eight people per table. Now, do they need to have a plate that they can only touch their plate, or are they allowed to have um, plates in the middle of the table and then take for to their own plate? Um, personally, uh, listen, so wh what we need to understand right now that the guidelines are very fresh and there are questions yes. that, that still need to be answered. But personally, if hygiene is taken in consideration, so there are adequate tongs or whatever, and there is no risk of people touching food that is going to be eaten by someone else, I think that can happen, personally. We are still uh, looking into it. Um, and I think that uh, it could be another alternative. Obviously, hygiene comes first. So yes. uh, you have to have the adequate spacing between um, uh, one item to the other, the adequate equipment so people uh, are grabbing uh, the food. Uh, Not using with, with, their hands. Dogs, whatever. Um, if if uh, someone asks me that question right now, I'll tell him we have to see... Uh, if this can work, to be honest. I, I think I would suggest a plate, to be honest. Exactly. Because it's the same thing. Service, because family service, it's still... Um, there's still risks. You can still... I mean, there's still a risk, exactly. exactly. Um, um, and you're going to get the same thing. Exactly. Instead of having one plate in the middle of... Maybe then there's a plane with ratios. You can... You can change ratios if you do a family plate, a family plating thing. But like I, I fully, I fully uh, back Katya and this uh, safety first. Yes, I, I would have to agree with with with, with both of you. Um, safety first. Um, so let's make sure that's basically it's a, a member of a fun experience and we don't end up having any hiccups. Um, guys, I'm going to take one more because we have a lot of questions coming in for you guys. Um, where basically now Ben has asked, um, with regards to the suppliers, must they all wear masks yes. um, at the weddings now? Yes. 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 All Including every single waiter. All suppliers at all time should wear mask or a visor. There's no excuses. All of us. I mean, security staff, photographer, waiter, everyone. We, we can't the risk the couple the getting bathroom. fined because of us. That will be... Yes. It's a big loss, eh? because to cover a face like this... Is... <laughs> <laughs> the things you have to do, Paolo. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> so we have another question so from Elkin. I'm going to I'm going to read it out for you guys. Is the government guide are the government guidelines making a difference between the ceremony and the reception? Given that in yesterday's speech it was said that weddings are to be in in a restaurant style, with food being served at the table. Can a civil ceremony be held with reception postponed, given that there is no food service? Mm -hmm. I think yes, right? Like masses. Like yesterday, I was listening to Father. I don't remember the name. He was saying with um, mass ceremonies, they are keeping in line um, with what the health authorities have told them, yes, which is yes, yes. people have to remain in clusters, six to the groups, a cluster of six to eight people. If you're not in the same cluster, you need to keep away two meters. Yes, the yes, mask, yes. 
Like in, so, like in funerals, like in funerals. But yes. then when it so comes I to think... civil ceremony, when it's a civil, it's different then. Well, I mean, but we will. Okay. So, but but, but, I but mean, you take it's... those guidelines and implement them for the civil yes, ceremony yes, then. Yes, yes. Not a problem. Same thing. Same oh, yeah. We need a bigger space, of course. <laughs> <laughs> the last comment we have at the moment is from Caroline Bonanno. Thank you, Caroline. The bride and groom have to wear, wear masks as well during the wedding mass. No, I hope not. No, 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 I'm sure. No, no. They're far away from, Perhaps from maybe everybody until else. that they arrive. At no during the mass at Jeffrey, when, for example the bride is walking down the aisle perhaps she might have to wear the mask till she arrives and then she's able to take it off no. i hope not no no, no 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 i mean <laughs> i don't know i must there's no i mean there's no problem because there's no risk because exactly. with, the, with the person who's who's usually it's the father mm -hmm. so there's no problem whatsoever no no Sorry, yeah. We have another one. This is again now. I'm going to say this is the last one. Um, Elkin Kalea. He asked, "Mass ceremonies are different as churches have their own guidelines." Yeah, that's why um, I uh, this is relation. Yes, we keep the same principle and we apply it from the mass weddings into the civil ceremony, so you can everyone can still be safe and the civil ceremonies can still be done. Okay. And depending um, on the size of the place, because if it's small, you need to downsize the numbers. Exactly. That's exactly. So uh, I am going to push into the next topic in the agenda, guys, because we, we've hit over 55 minutes now. Um, uh, will no dance floors or bar service affect business now in weddings? Do you see that it has affect, affected your business that people cannot have the dance floor or the bar service? In my case, it won't affect my business in reality. I mean, it will affect it if they post, if the wedding is postponed. That's That's it. But uh, if I may, it will affect the bar service because when you think about it, having an open bar, you have more drinks consumed than having waiters served. For, so that for the caterer or for the wholesaler, for the beverages wholesaler, that, that will affect them for sure. I think uh, saying that nothing was affected or the business was not, not affected would be a, a lie. Um, if we've been affected from day one. It's, yes. it's not if we are affected, it's how are we working around what is happening. And I think um, we are doing our best to give the best service. I think all the wedding suppliers that I know of are doing their best to, to yes, we've been affected. And, and uh, this, this also is affecting the business, the employers, the employees and everything. Yes. Yes, and I did put up the next topic because I, I think it does fall in line exactly with how you guys are saying because um, from a supplier perspective, the restrictions announced, they are affecting you business-wise. I mean, we can't say they aren't. Yeah. Um, how yeah. bad? Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, it is very there's bad. a lot more yeah, work than day. It is very bad. And uh, something that everyone needs to remember is while each supplier is helping each couple and hoping that all suppliers are helping all couples, we, the suppliers here, are trying to survive. And that is very, very important for everybody to understand. Most of us are full-timers. This is our full-time yes, job. Yes. And it's, it, it's not easy. <laughs> it's, it, it wasn't easy. Um, if I may sure. add to, to what Katia says, uh, still the suppliers are being fair so I haven't heard or in most cases the suppliers are being fair they're being understandable even though sometimes the suppliers have to take part of the cost on themselves um, and they're being fair I mean um, uh, with all these restrictions, obviously we're being affected. I mean, even if you take a small thing in consideration, from a catering point of view, for example, the mass, the, the sanitization, the new regulation, new paperwork, new new um, changing of menus and all this. Right now I have emails waiting for me to be answered, but I'm giving priority day by day, because obviously at the end of the day, I will have to answer all the emails. The priority right now is for people who are getting married in the couple in the, in the coming days, and because they want answers right now, 
and, and and you can't blame them. And you can't blame Obviously them. not. Exactly. So, yes, I mean, I mean, it's affecting us not just not just in a in a, a business way, but it's affecting us even on how you manage the situation, on how you need to communicate your 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 message. Um, it's a new thing. But it's also affecting the couples. So here we're on the same boat all together. And that is, I think, that is yeah. that is why it is highly important that all the parties involved in the wedding understand, uh, they understand each other. Yes, agreed. Very good, very good. Um, I did have my next um, question for you guys, again, from a supplier perspective. Um, would you suggest that couples postpone their, their wedding dates or should they just adhere to the guidelines and get the show rolling? Hmm. That's a million dollar question. It's a difficult one, this one. It's a difficult one. So I go first. Okay, I'll, I'll take the leap. Okay. So, <laughs> first, of all, first of all, when a client, I'm, I'm, in, I'm, I'm a salesperson, okay? So when a client walks in front of you, the first thing you need to see is what they want. Because ultimately, I cannot force my ideas on the couples. Okay? Now, most of the couples are coming here for an advice. And I'll give them my advice. My advice is, if this wedding is so important for you, go ahead. Because nothing is really making a difference. Okay, there's changing, yes. But go ahead, because this is your big day. Other, if there are others who want to postpone, they can postpone. But um, it's a twofold. It's what the clients really want at the end of the day. Um, and I cannot, from my position right now here, give an advice like a, 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 a blank, a blank, a blanket. Okay. Advice. Yes. No. Because there is no blanket advice. You have to see the situations. I've seen situations where, for example, one of the parents um, of the couple um, was seriously ill and they wanted to get on with the wedding. So the parent will have the chance to see their, their, their children getting married. And that is so much, um, it's the pain in, in, in something like this. How can you tell someone, postpone your wedding to have a party? Well, he has the situation. There are situations that people, they have a ticking clock because they want kids. Yeah. And Each they, wedding has its story. For no, some. I mean, if, if for, the, yeah. for some couples, they are waiting for their wedding to plan a family. How can you stop them? You cannot stop them. I mean, yes, life they, and this, is, this takes us where we started. How important the weddings are and how different people perceive the wedding. Some might see it as just a celebration, as just a party. Other is the start of their journey. So you cannot answer in a blanket statement uh, this question because you need to first see the priorities of the couple. There are couples that wanted to postpone their wedding because their wedding band wasn't, wasn't available because they wanted to hear the music from that wedding band because the music is important in their wedding as yes. well. So not everyone gives. I had a wedding a couple once that didn't book the, the, and he's a friend of mine, he didn't book the wedding service from us because the photographer wasn't available. And I was like, seriously, you're choosing the photographer? And he told me, yes. Because he's a friend of mine and what is service. So the the priorities differ from couple to couple. Yes. And, yes. and our job as Katya's job as a as a wedding organizer, and our job as caterers and venues, uh, the jobs of bands and everyone, our job is to understand what the couple wants and help them get there. Well, I think one of the biggest issues I found um and that's why I had so many postponement, postponements for next year is because most of the couples have big families, including me. I'm, wa I'm one who has a big family because, you know, before 10 kids, 12 kids, 20 kids. So when they come, when they started to try to, to, you know, to, to, down, to, down, to, down, to down the numbers, they said, well, we can't. We can't. They literally can't because they're like 150, just family members only. And then exactly. 
close friends, colleagues, etc., etc. So that was one of my biggest problems because if most of us, Maltese, we have big, big families. So that's why yes. I said each couple has its story. So you honestly can't, you know, can't say anything about it. It's a bit of a problem. You know, it's, it's difficult to decide. From my perspective, um, there are some couples that can't proceed, can't go on. Um, I've had couples from abroad, for example, that they tried really hard to proceed with the wedding despite having everything against them. But then in the last minute, now the flights were cancelled. So even if they wanted, they couldn't make it to Malta. Um, but for the Maltese couples, in reality, um, they you know, like Paolo is saying, like Katia as well, in reality, life must go on and they have to realize and decide if they will embrace this change, these restrictions and move forward and make the best out of it rather than wait. And let's face it, there will always be uncertainty if you wait. It doesn't mean that this is with a time period, with an expiry date. So we don't know what's going to happen next week, let alone next month or next year. Yes, so, exactly. That, that's, sometimes, a, that's another headache. That's another sometimes headache. you have to make the most of what you of the hand you're dealt with. And let's face it, in terms of photography and video, for example, we okay, it won't be the same, but it will still be good. And there's no two ways of saying this, so we'll make the best out of it, like the couple will. Just enjoy it and the rest will come on its own. Agreed. Guys, I think those were the best answers. Thank you very much um, for answering that um, point on the agenda. And um, we are closing, closing to the end of the show, guys. I know we hit over the one hour, um, so we'll keep these last two questions short. Um, uh, this point is basically where do you see these changes affecting weddings in general moving forward? Will it create a cultural paradigm shift? I don't know what your opinion um, is on this. Okay, so you wanted a short answer, I'll give you a very short answer. COVID changed our lives. Yes. It changed, it changed our, our, the way we see things. It changed our, uh, the way um, we do. I, I mean, for example, I'll just give you an example. A few months, a few weeks ago, because it's not even months, my only day out was me and my girlfriend going to the supermarket and, and do, do the shopping. You know, um, everything had stopped. So, yes, I mean, we are changing. And we have to accept this. If the, how long is this change going to go? I don't know. No one knows. Do you, think, do you think that in weddings, this will affect all future weddings? Do you think that it will become a more common trend, perhaps, to have seated weddings? Um, yeah. You can't say it. No, you can't say really. You can't say, but it could be it could be that people will start thinking differently. And perhaps um, uh, they don't. It's not a must to do things because others did things this way. So let's do it our way even more so now than before. Um, uh, that's my opinion about this. I think going forward, couples will realize that, listen, this is our... I don't know, this is our budget, this is our style, we'll stick to it even if others say differently, kind of. Great. We have to um, see, we have to wait and see. <laughs> Yes, it's true. It's true. Uh, we do have a few more questions coming up here. We have Caroline Bonamna. She asked, do you recommend splitting the wedding in two? As in wedding mass and first two to three hours for family members. And then the last two to three hours of the wedding for friends and colleagues. Would it be possible since tables and venues need to be cleaned in between? It's always possible. Yes, it is possible. But at the same time, to have two dinners or lunch for the same wedding is Cost-wise, it's gonna be go like you have to change everything. Linen, yes, yes. Legs. Yes. everything, everything. Uh, and what can be done? What can be done is let's say in we if you have if you're thinking of doing that, what you can do is the second group of people are invited. Let's say like an hour, an hour and a half after the first group are finished, you the couple will leave with the photographer and they go and take photos somewhere while the venue is being reset up for the next group of guests. That's how I would do it. And, uh... 
Saya. Okay. All right. I hope that answers your question, Caroline. Um, uh, again, if the, if we haven't clarified enough for you, you're always welcome to contact Kata directly or Paul or or even your own suppliers that you're dealing with um, to get more of an understanding and get the show on the row. On um, guys, I'm going to go into the last question. Well, basically, I just wanted to ask if you have any tips for all 2020 brides and grooms to be. Oh, My tip would be keep positive. Yes. I mean, you know, this is this is something that is in history. We just have to keep life going yes. on. You know, exactly how we we can't change anything that is happening. We just have to be happy with what we, what we have. We have our loved ones. We have coffee. our family. For the subs and 20 cups, they should feel really good that they're still going on with their plans, even though they're different. So yes, enjoy you. your day and leave it up to the professionals to worry about things and you just enjoy yourself and live the moment. Yes, yes, make the best out of it. Um, like I said earlier, love will always prevail and let's stay safe. Exactly. If, if I may. I think right now, if I had to do the, the speech of live long and prosper, um, right now, what is most, for those who are organizing the weddings on the coming days, which I really sympathize with them, it's, I mean, I've seen couples crying. So if, if I think you could join and just tell them, listen, be courageous. I mean, courage. And what is say courage? Um, I mean, be positive, like you all said, but most of all, don't panic because panic um, lends you know. Yes. I mean, yes. Discuss with your suppliers, discuss with your wedding organizers, and don't panic. After all, this is their big day. And, yes. And that's you have to remember good. that all suppliers seem to remember that it's their big day. There's no room for mistake and there's no turning back. So let's make the best of it. That's it. <laughs> Taiva. Um, last two comments we have from Jonathan. This was a brilliant show. Thank you all for the advice and information provided. I'm sure all viewers um, got something out of it. Guys, this I think was a really amazing show. We've had over 50 people watching all the time consecutively for the whole um, hour and 10 minutes that we've been live, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> I did try to keep it short as possible. Caroline also said, yes, thank you. I think um, because of her you all. before. Because of her, uh, yes. of her question before. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have Elken that did comment, best option, let me see. Best oh, option oh, would be to take it like Johnny <laughs> Cowboy with a smile oh, on your face. Amazing. <laughs> my deck, my <laughs> 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 Amazing. No, guys, thank you very, very much for being on the show. Thank you. I know you guys have an extremely busy schedule this week, yes. getting everything in line, pleasing all your, your couples, uh, making sure that everything is going to be um, without a hitch for every single event you guys are organizing. Um, okay, we, have, we do have question. a question here. Yes. yes. Okay. This is the very last one we're going to put on for you guys. What are your views on the situation? where a couple agreed with the venue catering company for a number of guests. And given the new rules, they decide to limit invites to direct family members only going for a very small function. This is Samantha Bella. Do you want me to repeat it? Yeah, I mean, I'm trying to... Um, I think she answered her own question, to be honest. I mean... Yes, I'm trying uh -huh. to understand the question. What are your views on a situation where a couple agreed with the company for a number of guests? Well, we agree. I think if I'm understanding the, the comment right, yes, we agree that. To, you ha I mean, if you perhaps uh, she means that the venue or caterer perhaps has not agreed that she's lowering the amount. Ah. <laughs> That's how I'm understanding it, yes. Uh -huh. ah, no, Lersa, so, sorry, Ma, that I can't agree on, of course, no. If, uh, I mean, what can, what, it's can, not, what can they do? It's not that they want to go from 400 to 80 people. Uh, uh, but it's not because they are choosing, you know, this is um, this is something no one has control yeah, on. Exactly. So the couple have, you know, it's not their fault. I think what Samantha also needs to understand that some changes will be more costly. 
like I said before, if she was calculating, yes. I mean, the, the venue owner, now this is up to the venue owners, because some, some venue owners uh, have different opinions. But uh, if, the, if she's calculating the cost per person, the venue doesn't make a difference if he's selling the venue for 10 people or selling the venue for 400 people. For, yes. So the cost of the venue per se. Uh, I understand. So I don't know. I don't know if that is the issue here. I don't and, think so. You know, I've heard. I've heard. Um, I I had. I came across someone who who's the venue caterer refused to go down on numbers. So I think it's something which is relating what what Samantha is saying, and that obviously is against the law. It can't be done, of course. So. <laughs> what can they do? It's not their fault. Exactly. I think, I think again well, that we we cannot be uh, presumed to yeah, what do you say um, to answer that question? No, yes. no. I, I'm just assuming. I'm just exactly. Assuming. You have exactly. to see the, have the case. A story case. You have to see story. both sides. Yes. Yeah. No. You have to see the case. How's the case? Maybe the venue was charged uh, on with the menu uh, per head, for example. Yes. I don't know. So you have a cost per head on the menu, and the venue was kind of free. I don't know. It depends. Um, no, no, no. But yeah, there, what I'm saying, different. so I rephrase what I'm saying is that obviously no venue cater should restrict the client. No, no, that, no. Oh, you know they they can't tell them no. You postpone, so you will still have the same numbers that we agreed on. No, that, it doesn't no. work like that. It doesn't work. I mean, exactly. The person have rented exactly. the venue and the, the owners should honor the, the... But then again, we don't know the situation. No, and no. Uh, personally, I would uh, not comment because I don't know the situation. Sorry, Samantha. Exactly. Um, I cannot comment completely. I'm, I'm... Yes, I commented because as I am a wedding planner, I can, you know, because I'm outside the venue catering. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I am sorry, Samantha. Uh, I do wish we could do this, but maybe this is something that unfortunately you're going to have to look into more uh, detail with the supplier to try and get an understanding what is happening to get the best out of the situation that we are all in at the moment. Um, uh, guys, I am going to put the show um, to a close now. It's been an Great pleasure talking with you all. Um, there's a very, very good vibe between you all three suppliers. Um, you can tell that you guys have worked together before. <laughs> Thank you to all our viewers. Thank you for all your comments, all your questions, continuing to watch all our shows. Um, uh, I have the last comment there from Rosie. Uh, great show, very informative. Thanks for all your advice. If you guys, I don't know if you have any final words, guys, and if you want to say a quick goodbye. See you at your wedding. Yes. Paul, <laughs> yes. I'm not sure, but maybe I see you Saturday. I'm not sure if you're a duty or not. I can't tell you. <laughs> Take it off. <open. laughs> so I'm going to do them one by one, guys. Semenyov, I'm going to wave you goodbye. Thank you, you too. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ciao, ciao. Uh, Paolo, I'm going to wave you goodbye as well. Thank you very much. As always, I love having you on the show. Thank you. Bye, Paul. Ciao. Thank you to you, Katya. I, I believe it's the first time we had you on the show, right? Yes, yes, yes. So now we need to get another spot with you one-on-one -on -one so we can talk a bit more about wedding planning. But thank you very much for today, considering I know you have a lot of work um, with this, uh, this Saturday wedding that you have, um, that you're planning right now, right? Um, yes. So thank you very much and see you soon. Thank you. Bye. There you have it, guys. Episode 18 of the Get Hitched um, live wedding chat show. I hope you guys found it informative as much as I have. Um, I know the regulations are coming out and everything is changing on a daily basis. Um, not even the suppliers themselves have all the information on paper, but people are trying to go and get an understanding and make sure that all your weddings um, can still happen and that dream day, that start to a new chapter can still happen for you guys. As always, these are all suppliers that work with us on Get Hitched. So if you need anything, you can contact us on Get Hitched. You can contact the suppliers directly on their um, Facebook pages. And also, I will be linking for you their Get Hitched profile so you can even see their work and so on 
and so forth if you're planning even for next year and so on thank you very much and i see you next time bye bye